subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN UGC NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so today we are going to record uh, solutions for SHOM series. So as we are going to cover the, the series of signals and system, we are going to solve all the unsolved uh, questions of SHOM series. So SHOM series is a very nice book and it has been seen that uh, generally questions from this book are occurring in GATE as well as ESE exams directly. Okay, they just... Uh, taking the questions and putting them directly in the exam so it's very beneficial if you just uh, solve or just go through the solutions of this book so we are taking uh, solved examples uh, in between the lectures also and uh, other than that we are taking unsolved uh, exercises also as we complete chapter by chapter okay so uh, in this uh, video i'm covering mcq solutions and in the next video we'll also cover subjective questions right okay so uh, there are several questions uh, i'm going to just uh, uh, read the questions and provide with the solution some of the solutions or some of the things have been already covered in the lecture so i uh, may refer you to the lecture if i think i'll cover it once again right so the first question is random signal can be modeled by see we've discussed this category of signal that signals can be categorized as random and deterministic okay random and deterministic so we uh, said that we are going to study only about deterministic signals deterministic signals are those we uh, whose values can be determined by following some rules okay whose values are defined in some way or other whereas random signals are those signals whose value you cannot determine okay their behavior cannot be predetermined do not know what value is going to occur those are known as random signals right so now they are asking if you want to model random signals see we are using differential equations integral equations or difference equations to model deterministic signals why because their behavior is known okay so we can express them as differentiation or integration of several signals for modeling random signals we are using probabilistic approach okay we are using probability or statistics so we are using some statistical parameters like mean median mode okay we're using all these parameters to model random signals so random signals can be modeled by statistical parameters so the correct answer is going to be option C uh, statistical parameters like like I'm mentioning some examples mean median mode variance there are several of them so we're using these parameters to model random signals okay look at the second question they're asking that which of these properties are satisfied by even signal so already we studied that if a signal is even then its time reversed version is going to be same as the signal if you flip it across uh, flip it about y axis if you just reverse it in time the signal is going to remain the same so this is the property of even signal if i want to look at in time uh, discrete time uh, domain then it's going to be x of minus n equal to xn that is if even if i flip the signal it's going to remain same so uh, this is a this is an example of a even signal right if you just flip it it's going to remain same only okay time reverse signal is also going to look the same only so if you just go through the options the first option first option reads x of minus t is equal to xt this is going to be the definition of even signal see in the second signal what they have given x of minus n is equal to minus x so this represents odd signal okay this is the definition of odd signal where time reversed signal is the flipped signal across x axis is the okay this this minus sign comes out in odd signal fine look at the next question so now they're asking about odd signal so we've already discussed that for a signal to be odd the property is going to be x of minus t must be equal to minus xt or in discrete time domain x of minus n must be equal to minus xn if you just go through the option you'll find out the correct option is going to be option b okay this represents even signal even signal fine 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एनी सिग्नल एक्स टी कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एड ओके सो वी डिस्कस अबाउट दिस इन द लेक्चर ऑल्सो एनी सिग्नल एनी जनरल सिग्नल कैन बी एक्सप्रेस एज सम ऑफ अ इवन एंड ऑड सिग्नल हाउ सी टू ऑप्टेन अ इवन सिग्नल वी आर यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला ओके एक्स टी प्लस एक्स ऑफ माइनस टी अपॉन टू एंड टू ऑप्टेन अ ऑड सिग्नल वी आर यूजिंग एक्स टी माइनस एक्स ऑफ माइनस टी अपॉन टू सो वी यूजिंग दीज टू फॉर्मूला टू ऑप्टेन इवन पार्ट और ऑड पार्ट ऑफ एनी सिग्नल सी देर आर गोइंग टू बी सिग्नल विच आर नीदर इवन नॉर ऑड ओके सो इफ यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रिप्रेजेंट दम एज सम ऑफ अ इवन एंड ऑड सिग्नल दिस इज हाउ यू गोइंग टू डू इट ओके सो एनी सिग्नल एक्स टी If you just add these two, if you just add these two equations, you're going to see that this x of minus t is going to cancel out, and x t is going to become sum of even and odd signals. Okay, so what can I say? Any signal x t can be represented as sum of its even and odd parts x e t plus x not t. Right, so this is how we can represent any signal as sum of its even and odd parts, and this is how you can find even and odd parts of a signal, even if it is not neither even nor odd. Okay, fine. Look at the next question. Now they're talking about periodic signals. So we've talked about periodic signals uh, already. What happens in periodic signal is they're going to repeat their values after a fixed interval of time. After a fixed duration of time, they're going to repeat the same values again and again. After adding same thing to the time or subtracting same thing, we're going to obtain the same value. So we've discussed it in the definition only. If Capital T. If capital T, this is the time period. If this is the time period of the signal, then I can say that if I am adding this capital T or subtracting this from time, I am going to obtain the same value. Okay. So uh, according to this definition, option A is also correct. Option B is also correct. Also in discrete time domain. As we are adding this capital T in a continuous time domain, this is going to be replaced by. Replaced by capital N. Capital N is the time period in the in discrete time. So this is going to be x n. Uh, this m is just a constant, just representing some integer zero, one, two. Okay. So uh, this represents that we are adding this again and again. Fine. So all of these three options represent the basic definition of periodic signals. So the correct option is going to be all of above. Right. Moving on. Now they are asking about energy signal. So we've discussed the definition of energy signal is the signals which have finite energy and zero power. Signals with finite energy and zero power are known as energy signals, right? Finite energy. Finite energy means energy must lie between zero and infinity. And what is going to be their power then? Zero power. See. Power is going to be finite only if a signal has infinite energy. Once we find out that the energy is infinite, then only we are going to proceed to find power, right? So if the energy is finite in itself, power is going to be zero. So energy signals are the signal which have finite energy and zero power, which is option A. So the correct option is going to be option A. Uh, so this holds uh, true for both continuous time and discrete time signals. So this is going to be true for Continuous time and discrete time both, right? Now they're talking about power signals. Now we know that power. We're going to calculate power only when energy is infinite. Or energy is infinite, and power must be finite for a signal to be called as power signal. So the correct option is going to be option C. Finite power and infinite energy. And when is going a signal going to be neither power nor energy signal? When it has infinite energy, infinite power, or zero power, zero energy, okay, something like this, then it is going to be neither power nor energy signal, right? Look at the next question now. System with memory can be characterized by C. Uh, so we we'll talk about system. The system can be memoryless or with memory. Now, if a system is having memory, that is, it re it uh, records values of the past, it uh, retains values of the past. 
right so to represent such a system we are going to use differential or difference equation see what does differential equation mean what does differential of a function mean differential or difference equation gives the past value value one instance before so uh, to represent a system with memory we are going to use differential or difference equation okay so the correct option is going to be d we can use both differential equation in case of continuous time or difference equation in case of discrete time systems so to represent a system with memory we are going to use differential or difference equation fine so the answer is going to be option d look at the next question so they are asking which system is non linear in nature for to identify linearity of a system what are we going to judge we we having two criteria homogeneity and superposition what is homogeneity okay so in uh, in uh, a nutshell i can say that what is homogeneity is that if i am uh, multiplying the input with a constant the output should also be multiplied with the same constant and what is linear superposition if i add two signals their output must also add okay uh, which means that if y1 is output of x1 and y2 was x output of x2 then output of a x1 plus b x2 must be a y1 plus b y2 this is what linearity stands for okay we i multiplied x1 with a so y1 got multiplied with a which represents homogeneity and i added these two signals in the input so the output also got added which means which represents superposition so this is what linearity means okay this is how we are checking linearity now see uh, in the first option we just having a constant in multiplication so this is not going to affect uh, linearity right if i just uh, perform this kind of operation it's going to satisfy in third and fourth options also these functions are linear functions why because they are just simple addition or subtraction of shifted time shifted signals but look at the option b here we are having a term of x square one term with power 2 now when there is a square of a term that is not going to follow these kind of functions right why because whenever you are going to add signals in whole square some extra terms of multiplication are also going to come which are not desired we do not desire them okay we want linearity so this system this uh, option b is a non linear system right because this does not follow the principles of homogeneity and superposition okay it may even follow homogeneity but it is not going to follow superposition right fine uh now look at the next question so they are asking uh, you to find out the type of the system which are described by the following equation y square t plus 2y t is equal to x square t plus x t plus c so they are asking that what kind of system is represented by this equation so firstly you can see that there is a square term so the system is not linear this is going to be non linear non linear then they are asking if the system is uh, dynamic or static see we are not having any memory in the system we are not having any past values t minus 1 t plus 1 anything like that so the system is going to be a static system this system is going to be static static means that uh, the values of the same instant are present so the correct option is going to be option d the system described by the given equation is representing a non linear and static system right continuing to the next question so they are asking that to characterize a dynamic system what equations are you going to use okay so we've already discussed this what is a dynamic system a dynamic system is a system with memory a system which retains values of the past or tells about the future okay which is not talking about the same instant of time to represent such a system you are going to use differential equation we've seen a question of similar kind so i don't think we need a lot of discussion here next question is which system is non causal see uh, what is a causal and what is a non causal system see we consider that any system that we are talking about starts from time t is equal to 0 okay this is taken as a reference time if i have any signal which starts from t is equal to 1 2 that is acceptable 
time delayed systems are acceptable this is the starting point okay start now any system any signal that starts from t is equal to 1 2 or so on or 0 is acceptable but a signal which is advanced in time which started before the point of observation this start is the point of observation okay this is where we started looking at if a signal is starting somewhere before t is equal to 0 that is which is advanced in time then that system is going to be non causal system we've already looked at this right when we uh, studied about operation time delayed signals time delayed signals or system are of the form xt minus t not and and time advanced systems or signals time advanced system or signals are of the form xt plus t not if you are having a signal or system of the form xt plus t not it's going to be advanced in time we say that it started before we started observation so for a system to be non causal it must have something added to its argument okay so as you can see from the options option a is going to fit in so y t is equal to x of t plus 1 is a non causal system it started before t is equal to 0 all the other signals see this started at t is equal to 1 t is equal to 1 this started at t is equal to 0 so they are going to be causal systems right look at the next question now they are expressing a discrete time system as product of two signals and they are asking about uh, causal causality non linearity and uh, time variancy now see we are going to talk about all of them one by one right so uh, firstly we are going to talk about its uh, causality since the signals are starting from n is equal to 0 both so the signal is going to be causal we just discussed about causal non causal systems both the signals start from n is equal to 0 so the system is going to be causal now since these signals are multiplied multiplication is a non linear operation plus and minus are linear operations multiplication and division are non linear operations why because they are not going to follow superposition okay so this is going to be a non linear system non linear system okay so already one option only with causal and non linear still if you want to discuss about time variant or time invariant what you going to do is you going to shift both the signals by same amount you shift them by n not i n minus n not and just check okay so if you just do that if you just take you're going to get them as time varying time varying the system is going to be time varying okay so uh, the correct option is going to be b option b right now they are expressing a continuous time system by y cube t plus y square t plus y t is equal to x square t plus x t and again they are asking if the system is linear non linear static dynamic so we already seen a system of this kind is going to be non linear since it has a square term and since all the uh, arguments are t only we not having any memory in the system so the system is going to be static so the correct option for this question is going to be option d non linear and static we already discussed about linearity and static dynamic system so i'm not uh, explaining in detail again look at the next question so they are again asking about a causal system so you know that a causal system is one which start before t is equal to 0 which is advanced in time if you just look at the option uh, you can identify this easily which of them is going to be causal system so uh, see this is having a time is advanced uh, signal this is also having a time advanced signal this one also so the only causal system out of them is going to be option b 5 ut plus 3 ut minus 1 this starts from t is equal to 1 and this starts from t is equal to 0 so this signal this system is going to be a causal system right now the uh, question is the mathematical model of a system is linear if it obeys principle of so we have discussed that to a for a system to be linear it should be homogeneous and it should obey superposition homogeneity and superposition superposition homogeneity 
so the correct option is going to be option D. A and B both, right? We've already discussed what is superposition, what is homogeneity. Now they are asking identify the time invariant system. Okay, so uh, what is a time invariant system? If I delay the input by tau, if I delay the input by a particular amount, the output should get delayed by the same amount that represents time invariance. If on delaying input by tau, output gets delayed by the same amount that represents time invariant system. Okay, so if you just look at the options, this B option is going to represent a time invariant system. So this is the basic definition of a time invariant system. By delaying or advancing the input by amount tau, the output should get delayed or advanced by the same amount. Right. Look at the next question. So they are asking you to identify the correct sketch of unit step signal ut minus 2. Now see what is this minus 2? This is a time shifting operation. Time shifting. Now since they, we are subtracting 2, this is going to be a right shift. Right shift or time delay. Time delay. How do you find out if a shift is right shift or left shift? If it is a time delay or time advancement? See, if I put t is equal to 2 in this function, I put t is equal to 2, what is going to happen? What am I going to obtain? u of 0. Which means that at t is equal to t 2, I should get the value of the initial function, a value the initial function had at t is equal to 0. Right? So if ut was something like this, ut was something like this, its value at t is equal to 0 should now be the value at t is equal to 2. t is equal to 2. So this is how you are obtaining shifted signal. This is how you are going to check if the signal is shifted right or shifted left. Okay. So uh, if you just check the option, the option is going to be the correct one. Right. So this is going to be the shifted signal. Okay. Okay, the next question. So now they are asking you for the correct sketch of u of minus n. So first I am going to sketch u n. How is u n going to look like? It consists of impulses of size 1. All impulses of value 1. Starting from n is equal to 0. Okay, n is equal to 0. All impulses of size 1. Now we discussed that when we are reversing a signal in time, when we are time reversing a signal, we are just adding minus signs to all the n values. Only the signal is going to flip about y axis, mirror image about y axis, right? We are just adding negative sign. If I just add negative sign to all the n values, what is going to happen? The 0 is going to remain 0 only. Impulse is going to occur here. This value is going to shift to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so we are just going to have minus signs added to them. So this is going to be value at minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. So the function is still going to start from n is equal to 0 only and continue on the left side. If you just check the options, you can see that C option is the correct one. Okay, this is going to be the sketch of u of minus n. Right. At the next question. Uh, so you are required to identify the false statement. Uh, now see we are going to look at uh, all of them one by one. This is making use of the shifting property of the impulse function. What is the shifting property? This impulse occurs at t is equal to 0. We have learnt about a property like this right. ft into del t is going to be t minus t not suppose. Uh, okay. Just going to write it again maybe. Yeah. So ft into del t minus t naught. This becomes this this impulse is occurring at occurs at t is equal to t naught. So what happens is when you're multiplying this with the function, what happens is this is going to become value of the function at the point of occurrence of this impulse into impulse. Why is this happening is, if you are multiplying an impulse with a function, impulse at a particular point with a function, only that point of the function is going to remain, only that value is going to be retained, the rest all of the function is going to be lost. This is known as sampling or sifting property of impulse function. So if you just look at the first part, 
this impulse occurs at t is equal to 0. Now in multiplication I am having t. So what happens? We are going to have value of t at t is equal to 0 which is 0 itself into del t. This comes out to be 0. So this part is correct. Now this function, this delta occurs at occurs at t is equal to pi. This is a shifted delta function occurs at t is equal to pi. So what happens? We are going to obtain value of cos at t is equal to pi into delta of t minus pi. Now you know that cos pi is having value, cos 180 degree is having value minus 1. So this is going to become minus of delta t minus pi which is given which is true. Now look at the last part. Okay, so we have uh, seen a property of del dash t which is this can be written as minus d by dt of del t and if you are having this with multiplication of with some function okay if, if we are having ft in uh, multiplication fine I will make a correction here small correction if I am having del dash t what is del dash t differential of impulse function if I am having multiplication del dash t in multiplication with a function this is going to become minus d by dt of ft into del t. Okay, so this is a property of shifted, oh, sorry, differential of impulse. Okay, this is a property of differential of impulse. So using this property here ft is t, right, ft is t in this part. What is going to be, what is going to happen? This is going to become minus and what is going to be the differential of t? It's 1 into del t which is given here. So this is also correct. This is a property of the differential of impulse. Now you know that del t that is impulse function is differential of unit step function which is not integral of unit step function. Okay. It is differentiation of unit step function. So this is the false statement. This is incorrect statement. Right. Uh, now look at the next question. So they are asking you to identify non-periodic signal. Uh, so I am going to sketch graphs for this signal so that you have an idea how to identify non-periodic signals. See otherwise also you can just check. This cos square t is having, this is just cos only, just uh, all the negative cycles of cos are going to be, going to occur on the positive axis. This is going uh, to be cos square t. It's going to continue on both sides. Right. How did this happen? We have seen the graph of cos, right? You know that this is how cos function looks like. Okay. Not very good at drawing. But you can understand. This is how cos function looks like. Right. So, when you are going to square this function, what happens is, it is something like this negative cycles in cos are going to convert to positive cycles. So this is how cos square t is going to look like. Okay, you can just check by putting values. If you just put t, cos square 0 is going to be 1. Okay, if you just put uh, t is equal to pi by 2, cos square uh, pi by 2 is going to be 0. Again, cos pi is minus 1, but when you square it, it is going to be, okay, I'm sorry, pi. Right, this is going to be 3 pi by 2. Fine. So now you can see that this is a periodic function. This is a periodic function with period of how much? Pi. This is a periodic function with a period of pi. Similarly, sine square t is also a periodic function with a period of pi. Okay, you can just get, uh, sketch the graph of sine square t in a similar manner. Just shift this graph uh, by pi by 2. Okay, you are going to obtain the graph of sine square t. Now, see this sine 2 pi by 3 t, this is also going to be a periodic function. Why? Because you know that any function of the form sine omega naught t, this sine omega naught t is going to be periodic. Okay. Uh, I think we missed this when we discussed periodic and non-periodic functions. But if a function is discrete, that is if you are having a function of form sine n omega naught, then for this function to be periodic, this omega naught by 2 pi must be a rational number, must be a rational number. Only then this function is going to be periodic. But this is not the case in continuous time signals. 
any signal of the form sin omega naught t is going to be periodic okay so this sin 2 pi by 3 uh, t is going to be a periodic signal now this signal cos 2 pi t into ut is not periodic why because this occurs only for positive values of t okay this is going to be something like this if i just draw this this is going to be something like this this is not going to occur for not going to occur for negative t values why because we multiplied this with ut ut retains only the positive values only the function for positive t values so this is going to be a non periodic signal for a signal to be periodic it should have the same value either you subtract its time period from it or add now this is going to have the same value if you just keep on adding the time period that is 2 pi but if you subtract 2 pi from the argument it's not going to have the same value it's not occurring for real negative values of t so this is going to be a non periodic signal okay uh, look at the next question now they're asking you for even part of a unit step signal so we are defining unit step signal something like this unit step signal is going to be 1 for all values of t greater than or equal to 0 and it's going to be 0 for all negative values of t or all values of t less than 0 uh, if i just sketch it this is uh, how something it looks like this is ut function unit step signal now to obtain even part or odd part we are going to require negated signal also time reverse signal also now we've seen this how you're going to do you're just going to reverse the argument right so what happens now you if you just multiply with minus sign min, uh, multiplying with minus sign reverses the inequality reverses the inequality so if i just try to represent this this is going to be one for all negative values of t and 0 for all positive values of these t right so this is how u minus t looks like now if you want to obtain even part of signal what is the uh, method to obtain even part of signal you just add add the signal with its time reversed version and divide the complete by 2 now what am i going to do if i want to obtain even part of this unit step signal i need to add both of them if i just add both of them this is how they're going to look like this is how they're going to look like now value of this is going to be one but since i need to uh, divide them by half so this value is going to become one by two if i just uh, try to write this signal i'm going to write it as one by two since it is having value one by two for all t values for all negative values positive values value of t at t is equal to zero or at all time instances it is having the value one by two so this is going to be the even part of unit step signal okay uh, look at the next question so they are given a graph and they are asking you to represent it as a, a unit step signal, shifted step signal. So uh, see, yeah, there are two, three methods to do this. One way is that you know about unit step signal, right? This is how a unit step signal, normal unit step signal looks like. Now just look at the options. They are performing a shift of two and they are performing a reversal operation. So we can just check by performing the reversal or shift operations ourselves. Okay, then I am going to tell you how you can perform the uh, operations directly. How you can just check the answer directly by looking at the question itself. Okay. Uh, so what do I do first? See, uh, I can see that the signal has been reversed because it is having values towards negative infinity, right? It is having values uh, continue till minus infinity. So the signal has been reversed. Okay, this is confirmed. This is uh, this can be known by observing the signal. So reversal operation, one operation that they have performed is reversal. Reversal. Now the other option uh, operation that they performed is time shifting. Why? Because the signal is not starting from t is equal to zero. It's starting from some other instance of time. So the other uh, operation that they performed is shifting. Now if you just recall. That if uh, we have to perform, if we are required to perform operations of shifting, reversal, scaling, something like this, then the natural order that we are doing them is shifting first, then reversal, or shifting first, then scaling, right? So what do I do? I uh, follow the same, okay? So this is just hit and trial. So uh, what am I doing is, I'm performing a left shift, okay? 
I performed a left shift by 2 because the shift evident is 2. So I performed a left shift. So this is going to be ut plus 2. ut plus 2. Okay, I performed a left shift. Now I need to perform reversal because I can see that reversal has been formed. So I perform reversal. If I just perform reversal, okay, this is going to be minus 2, sorry. If I just perform reversal, this value is going to become 2. This is going to become 2. And the signal is going to become u minus t plus 2. Okay. Now see this looks exactly as a given signal. So if you just check the option, correct option is going to be option C. Right. This is going to be u2 minus t. Okay. Now see how can you uh, look at it and tell directly is if a signal would have been shifted right, I should have got something in minus okay in the argument a shift of negative but since this whole signal has been flipped whole signal has been reversed the shift became positive okay and this minus came here right so this is how you can tell directly also although it needs a little bit of practice if you just practice some questions you're going to get that uh, yourself okay look at the next question so they're asking that invertible systems are those systems where uh, they've given four options. I am going to read them. Output can be uniquely obtained from the knowledge of input. Input signals can be uniquely determined by observing output. A and B both. And uh, or system output is always constant. Okay. So we've uh, seen, uh, read about invertible and non-invertible systems. Invertible systems are those uh, for which by observing output we can tell about the input. Okay. Those are known as invertible systems right like addition subtraction all these are invertible systems so uh, b is going to be the correct option input signal can be uniquely determined by observing output signal right so now we've come to the last question okay so they're asking that which of the given systems are invertible system so uh, you can just see this this system performs addition of 5 to the input now if i want to obtain yt from xt i can just write xt is yt minus 5 which is going to be a unique value so from the knowledge of output i'm going to obtain input i'm able to obtain input so this is going to be a invertible system right look at the next part yt is x square t now see what is xt going to be is going to be square root of yt whenever you're taking square root you're putting plus and minus here now see we're not able to obtain a unique value why because for one value of yt you're going to obtain two values of xt you're going to obtain two one positive and one negative values for xt we did not ob obtain a we were not able to obtain a unique value which is why this is going to be a non-invertible system Okay, and look at the uh, last part. This is an integration operation. Now, see one thing that you need to be careful is limits uh, play a major role here. Okay, here the limits are from minus infinity to t, which means this is representing time varying area under the graph. This represents time varying area under the graph. This is a reversible operation, reversible system. Okay, like, but if the uh, limits would have been minus infinity to infinity, it would not have been or 0 to infinity or 0 to 2 any other limits other than minus infinity this would have been a non-invertible system integration is invertible only if the limits are from minus infinity to c right because this only uh, is in, it's, it's only uh, for these limits the inverse is differentiation okay so this is also going to be a invertible system so the correct option is going to be option d which consists of option A and C. Okay, so this is all for right now. Thank you so much. And uh, if you have any queries or any doubts regarding all of these questions or anything else, you can just leave us in comments. Thank you for watching.